story time. And at that, I want to thank the sponsor of today's video being Surfshark VPN. So a virtual private network helps to keep your data safe while you're online. So when I was in Mexico, my computer crashed and it was absolutely horrible because as you know, being a YouTuber, I'm very dependent on my computer. But I couldn't even go on the internet safely to access my YouTube account. I was having to use public networks and public Wi-Fi's which constantly had really low security settings, putting me in a very dangerous situation for my YouTube channel to be stolen and or hacked. Luckily through this time, I did have Surfshark VPN, not only on my computer, but on all my devices because it is unlimited devices. So luckily I had it on my phone, which ultimately helped keep my YouTube channel safe. I didn't get hacked and so here we are luckily today. And I also actually use it to change geography. So I was able to uh, access the Canadian, the American websites, even though I was out of Mexico. So whether you're traveling or just constantly using public networks, protect your data. Definitely check out Surfshark right now using that code on screen. Yes, that's right, that is Joel H. And you can click that link below, being surfshark.deals forward slash Joel H. Plus it actually also comes with a money back guarantee. And that'll actually give you 83% off and three months free. So a great deal, definitely use that code, check that link, and now let's get to the rest of the video. Hey everyone, welcome to today's video where today we're here at Wing Long. Yes, that is right, Wing Long in Merida, Mexico, guys. So I will say, I never thought I would see Chinese food in Mexico, like at all. Maybe that's just my ignorance, but I didn't expect to see Chinese food, and especially so readily in Mexico. It was very, very popular. Um, maybe, you know, I could see it maybe in the, some of the more Americanized areas, but nope, here in Merida, we got Chinese food, and we have a Chinese food buffet, which is freaking awesome. I hadn't been to a Chinese food buffet in about two years prior to this, so I was super excited to get into some Chinese food, and I will say, it was actually really good Chinese food. The Chinese food is definitely a lot more like a American style Chinese food, not like a traditional Chinese food. You know, I've obviously been to like uh, Chinese food buffets in Canada, America, and it was this style of Chinese food which I had there compared to, um, you know, like a more traditional, authentic uh, Chinese food restaurant, something along those lines, that capacity. The overall cost of this buffet was about 130 to about 140, 50, 60 pesos, kind of depending on the day. Um, for myself, this day I believe it was 130, which is the equivalence of about maybe seven American dollars, so very, very reasonable. Um, I was here at about 4 o'clock when I started, and they closed at 6.30. So getting into the food, well, let's just stop and talk about the beauty of this dish right here, guys. This was the, like, general Tao-style chicken, and it was phenomenal. Um, I will say, again, a lot of the names of these items were in Spanish, um, so I will not have a uh, exact name on them, so I'll definitely be using my descriptors, but this kind of, uh, the general style Tao chicken was great. This year I'm having a little bit of a pork rib, um, which was, it was fair. I mean, you know, kind of these red pork ribs, they often have them at the Chinese food buffets, a lot of Chinese food restaurants, so pretty standard affair. But like I said, oh my gosh, that general Tao style chicken right here, it was crispy, it was crunchy, it was sweet, it was tangy, it was absolutely delicious, like just bar none delicious. Um, here I have, of course, some more of that General Tao chicken. I also had one chicken which looked very similar, which is a pineapple chicken. And I had some more of the kind of chicken slash pork dish, which I had at the start um, that I never got to talk about. This, what I'm eating right here, was kind of like a um, cashew or like peanut kind of chicken dish. So it was a spicy peanut dish. You had chicken, you had peanuts, you had a variety of uh, steamed like sauteed vegetables, um, you know, your broccoli, your celery, your onions, your mushrooms, which I will say what I was very impressed by is actually how everything was cooked. Um, it definitely had to do with the uh, high turnover rate. There is, although it looks quite dead uh, in the restaurant, there were probably about five other tables in there with me, five or six at this time. Like I said, this was before the dinner rush, whereas once the uh, kind of came more about five, 5.30, um, it, things really picked up. And a lot of people were doing kind of like a takeout order, um, you know, where you come on in, just kind of like a, call it a buffet to go. So they fill up you know, a tray or two and you go from there. Back to again this general Tao chicken slash the pineapple chicken. This is the uh, pineapple one I'm having right now, and it was very, very good as well. But this was definitely a more popular item. This one is literally like it was not being kept on the hot table at all. As soon as it appeared, it was being taken. This was uh, spo supposed to be one of the more picante, one of the more spicy options. Um, uh, and I don't, I didn't personally find it that spicy, but I mean, there was a little bit of heat to it. I also had um, earlier on both trays uh, kind of more just like a standard kind of steamed uh, chicken slash pork and vegetables. 
you know, I, I don't know how else to really describe it besides that, but a very kind of standardized, um, you know, dish that I would see at a Chinese food restaurant. And I will talk a little bit more about um, as it appears. One thing I will say is it was very, very salty as well. So you're going to see me drink my water. So on the second plate right here, we had a pile of kind of like a barbecue chicken, kind of like a rotisserie style. Again, I had some of my delicious uh, kind of general Tao style chicken. Right here, we had that chicken dish with the peanuts as well. And then we had uh, the kind of, again, um, this was a spicy pork and vegetable dish, basically. It was really interesting the way they did what they called their spicy dishes or their spicy items. So, uh, for example, with this pork, um, it was pretty fair. Again, a nice variety of different uh, vegetables, you know, sauteed in there. A little bit of a sweet sauce on it. I don't know really how else to describe it, but just like it, it's a dish you see at all Chinese food restaurants. It's vegetables, it's pork, it's sauteed, it tastes good. It'll just light kind of nice sweetness on it. I'll call it like a stir fry sauce per se. That's actually what you could call it. Very comparable to a stir fry. Um, and then going to this uh, peanut dish. Again, as I was saying, the interesting thing with the uh, hot and spicy items is, I, which I had earlier, like this exemplifying right here, is the chili peppers. The dishes were not hot throughout, like consistently, so it's not like there was a spicy sauce throughout. Rather, they had bits of peppers, whether it be dried or jalapenos. So you kind of had dishes that were a little bit more like hot spotted in the heat. So again, this is a piece of a jalapeno appearing in the one dish, um, you know, which were good. They were pretty spicy. Uh, definitely the little dried chili peppers were definitely hot bits. Um, so I wasn't just going to necessarily just eat them, uh, you know, as I got them per se, like kind of like a landmine. So that was very interesting. I think like generally what I learned from this, because I'm not used to a lot of, um, you know, let's say dishes I eat if they're spicy being like only really hot spotted. Um, I think I like, you know, kind of the consistent spice throughout. Um, so it was very interesting though. But hey, I mean, it was, that's basically what it was. I mean, essentially they were just taking the plain normal version of the item, whether it be the, you know, call it pork stir fry and or they're just throwing in some, you know, dried chili peppers or a couple jalapenos. And, but hey, it's a way to diversify it and easy to do so. The rotisserie slash barbecue chicken was solid. The best way to describe it is it kind of had like a, I'd say maybe like a Chinese five spice, kind of like that that kind of a flavor, you know, a little bit of anise, um, you know, just kind of that very traditional, I, I don't want to sound, you know, odd saying this, but like Chinese food flavor. Um, and again, of course, I had some more of my delicious, absolutely delicious, crispy, um, like very crispy. Like, again, the, the, I really have to say, like, everything was really cooked well, which I was sh almost, I don't want to say shocked, but just like a lot of Chinese uh, food buffets I've been to in America and Canada just that's one thing like the quality of food is generally pretty mediocre but this was very very impressive and I think the high turnover rate really helped with that <laughs> So you can already hear my sinuses running from eating that little bit of the, the, the spicy items, I guess you could say. Like I said, eating a couple of those peppers, um, the dried chili peppers uh, definitely packed a bit of a punch. Um, but nonetheless, I was back to kind of, I'll call it the, uh, you know, kind of pork, um, sauteed, you know, whatever stir fry dish. Um, the spicy version with the jalapenos in it. So like I said, as long as the, uh, you know, it, like I said, it was kind of hot spot in the heat, but nonetheless. And like I said, really enjoying that um, General Tao style of chicken. Um, General Tao is generally one of my favorite kind of items in general. I will say if I go to a buffet, I definitely only would consume it when I am definitely uh, purposely uh, having a little bit of a more splurgy day, um, a, a higher caloric day, because it is packed. I mean, we're talking lots of sodium, we're talking sugar, we're talking lots of fat. So first off, guys, I would never recommend you eating this quantity of food, never recommend you consuming this much sodium, um, and never recommending you uh, splurging on Chinese food. It is uh, definitely uh, very, mm, let's just say, it's not the uh, most optimal thing to do, especially on a regular basis. But hey, you got to treat yourself once in a while. And that's what I was doing today. As I mentioned, it had been a very long time since I was at a Chinese food buffet. And I was going to enjoy it. And of course, for a video, guys, uh, people also, uh, I think, identify and realize that I don't eat like this on a normal basis. This is for a video. Um, it is quite different uh, compared to my normal day, which I do have a couple videos on my channel covering what I eat like in a normal day. And uh, there will be a few more to come. 
Um, so after I did the uh, general tower and like all this stuff, again, lots and lots of sodium is very, very rich. I wanted to kind of switch it up. So I got a little bit of sweetness, got a little bit of pineapple. Um, the dessert section was quite limited. They had a couple fruits, pineapple, oranges. They also had an apple salad, which you'll see in a moment. And they had um, a cheesecake from Costco. Uh, very little left of it, but yeah, legit cheesecake from Costco. Still had the Kirkland label on and everything, which I thought was, was pretty, pretty unique. So for this round, I had a uh, stir-fry kind of di uh, beef dish, kind of similar to the pork leg I've been having, kind of into the sautéed beef, um, like a beef and vegetables, which was good. Again, same style of sauce, um, slivers of beef with the mixed of vegetables on there. We then also had, um, again, the apple salad, which I mentioned on the other plate, a little bit of pineapple. I had my favorite General Tao style chicken. Like I said, I don't know how many times I would have said General Tao in this video, but nonetheless, a lot, okay? And I'm going to probably say it a couple times more. Um, and then when we tried something new, I got some plantains. Um, so they had some fried uh, plantains, um, which is something which appears in a variety of different cultures. There's the plantains right there. Um, very interesting. I didn't know plantains were kind of a uh, Mexican style thing, but they definitely saw them throughout uh, the cuisine throughout our food adventures in a variety of different ways often served with a sweetened condensed milk um, sometimes with a bit of a cheese um, or a cream cheese on top or they just called it a cream so in like almost a half uh, I, I wouldn't say quite dessert fashion but in kind of a dish which is like half dessert half a, a, a side for a general meal kind of like in the United States you might have like a sweet potato casserole which was sweet potato sugar you know you might have some nuts or some marshmallows in it so it's like a very sweet desserty yet considered a side dish and not a dessert uh, I was definitely starting to heat up at this point um, just again, the amount of sodium was definitely hitting it. That blood pressure was rising. Um, but I mean, overall, uh, no complaints. I knew what I was doing when I was eating this much food. Here I am trying the manzana, or the apple. Apple and cream style of dish, and the pineapple. The pineapple, again, was solid. Um, so this was a very unique dish, uh, the apple salad. Um, it was honestly, I'd kind of describe it like apples and yogurt. Kind of, but like the, hmm, how do I put this? Imagine it's like apples and yogurt, but there is an additional almost like really, really, really light tasting, maybe like sour cream in there or something. So it was like, it had the, it was very sweet, but it had a little, little bit of a tang, which I wouldn't normally see in a, uh, in, in a yogurt, at least that I'm familiar with. So it was almost, I almost call it like that. So imagine like apples with yogurt, a little bit of sour cream. I was starting to fill up at this point, um, but I had some more of the uh, chicken and vegetable dish that I've been having. Um, I really love vegetables, and you can kind of tell, you know, this is just the style of food I'm attracted to. Some people are like, why don't you eat breads and rice? Well, I do sometimes in my leisure, but that's just not what I'm, you know, really enjoying. So yeah, while they, you know, definitely had some fried rices and stuff, that's just not what I'm into. I'm into the more kind of, um, I don't know. I don't want to say um, these are generally the more expensive items in all reality compared to the rice. Uh, and it's not that I'm picking them just for the price, but I'm picking them based on my preference. I love vegetables. I love fruits. I love animals. And animals are definitely my favorite food. And of course, what is beautiful about having a spoon is... I could just shovel everything in my mouth a little quicker. Yes, that's right, guys. So starting a new thing right here, eating Chinese food with a spoon. And again, like I said, definitely needed that water. That water was uh, very important. I was making sure I had a glass um, with each plate to the best I could because it was very, 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 uh, very salty. Um, and of course, you know, when you have the extra salty food, it makes you want to drink more liquids. I don't know if it's technically a strategy of the buffet to try to make them extra salty so you drink more and fill up more, but if it's not a purposeful strategy, it is definitely an accidental finding. Um, here I had a little bit of a cramp in my shoulder. I was like, I don't know if it's all the sodium I'm consuming or what, um, but like I said, I was... Uh, was very much enjoying all this. Um, they did not have any more of the pineapple chicken, which was one dish I would have liked. And what I noticed about at this time is you can see it's gotten a little darker. Um, after that dinner rush, about let's, let's say 5.30, 
they really stopped they stopped putting out any items so from about 5 30 until 6 30 when they closed um, there was no more uh, refilling of any items on the tray so basically it was just you know taking what was there what was still available so I got some more plantains as well and uh, you know again trying to get something a little a little sweet I had lots of uh, lots of lots of savory, lots of salty. So having a little bit of sweetness was definitely uh, definitely required, definitely needed, and a very welcomed flavor change on the palate. So kind of went and kind of cleaned up again some of the remaining items. So we had some more of the uh, barbecue chicken, which again was pretty good. It's pretty solid. This one with the five spice kind of reminds me of rotisserie style. I had the remainder of the spicy pork and vegetable dish. I took the, re the rest of the um, kind of general Tao style chicken. And uh, like I said, by this time, they were definitely coming towards a close. It was probably about 6. Again, they closed at 6.30. So, you know, I was totally fine with them not restocking the items. It made sense. It was sensical. And uh, I'd been eating for, you know, let's say at least an hour and a half, maybe two hours at this point. Um, but I'll say a good hour and a half. So I was ready to kind of finish up. I also got a uh, the last of the cheesecake, um, which again was the uh, Costco style cheesecake, uh, which they had there, um, which was good. It was a nice way to kind of end off on a sweet note. It was definitely uh, well, again, deserved on the palate after eating all this. But yeah, definitely got my money's worth, guys. This was a great deal. I would definitely recommend Wing Long. Very much appreciate the hospitality. appreciate the staff. They were very friendly. It was operating in a cafeteria-style service due to the pandemic. Um, but yeah, seriously, it was overall a very positive experience. I really enjoyed it. Would recommend. So if I'm, if I'm ever back in Merida, Wing Long, I will be back. Um, so yeah, to that, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, stay happy, healthy, hungry, and of course, happy eating. Hey everyone, so here we are downtown Merida, Yucatan, guys. Here with a good friend, Alessandra. Uh, here we're outside the cathedral. This is a super, super cool spot. Um, we're definitely standing out. I mean, although luckily Alessandra can speak fluent Spanish with her pink hair and with my white skin, we're definitely standing out a little bit. But guys, this is definitely one of the more uh, well-known sites down here in Merida. Very, very, very beautiful, guys. Uh, a lot of uh, Catholic um, culture, history here in Merida. We also have this beautiful green space park on the other side of the road. It's fantastic. The sun's coming out. Probably put some sunscreen on. It's a good idea. But yeah, let's uh, let's have some fun. And here we are over in the square. We have a nativity scene going on, which is pretty cool. I see there's a turkey. Apparently turkey's a big thing here in Mexico, which is pretty unique. Um, yeah, elephants and everything, and just like, just look at this. It's absolutely gorgeous. It's so peaceful too. Merida is apparently very, very safe. I'm not trying to jinx it. <laughs> um, oh, look, we have a big Merida sign. But yeah, this is this is super cool. I like it. I like it. Very old too. So another cool thing I didn't realize, they have like 7-Elevens and a lot of uh, kind of more stores I'm used to here in uh, Mexico, or at least in Merida and the area, but uh, everything's a little different. So like donuts, so that's like 50 cents, about 50 cents American for a donut. Um, I went to one the other day and uh, they had a really, really good drink. I'll see if I can find it, but they definitely have some different drinks here. Um, very, very big on um, sodas here in uh, in Mexico, interestingly enough. So they have like, here's a different one, Pepsi Kick like a high caffeine uh, Pepsi. Um, they have Squirt, Squirt's pretty traditional, but one of the few that comes in a diet, I'm all about them sugar-free drinks. Uh, I don't think, I think it's just a normal, yeah, basically 7-Up. 
Um, Fresca here has sugar in it. Um, they have these crystal drinks, which I never tried. Um, pretty cool though. They have, uh, they have those Be Light ones. Yeah, but they don't have the mango. Uh, yeah, I, I had I had one of these the other day, Be Light, and I had it in a mango. It was the best thing ever. Um, do they have the bigger ones? That's why I grabbed the bigger one. Maybe maybe there's different flavors and different different things. But uh, yeah, pretty pretty cool. All right, so they didn't have the mango drink we wanted, but uh, well, they pretty much did. But same kind, just like a sugar-free uh, agua feel. Just uh, like don't cheat. So it's like not cheating water because it's sugar-free. Alessandra went with a uh, lime or lemonade one. It's very, very, very good. Here I got a uh, Jamaica, which is a flower. And uh, let's give it a good old try if I can get it open here. Sure, thanks so much. T shirts. Thank you. All right, let's give this good old one a try. Ooh, ooh. Yeah, good? it's really good. It's like a, I get like a red Kool-Aid vibe actually. Ooh. Try it? Yeah. Ooh, it's so good. That's good, right? Mm -hmm. I'm impressed guys. I would feel, would recommend. Pretty sugar much, free. Yeah, anything sugar free would recommend. With Sin, Sin Azuka? Sin Azuka. Sin Azuka. Cheers. So here we are in a market. This is supposed to be what it, like the authentic Mayan, like the more authentic stuff. These are not things coming from China. So more Mexican, more Mayan. And uh, the place is beautiful. Um, I mean, you know, they obviously have some hammocks and et cetera, but I mean, I don't know about you guys, but in Canada, we just don't have holes in the middle of our buildings. Um, <laughs> lots of different uh, art pieces as well. They had some people here. Previously, they had the ones all of the skeletons and stuff. Got some, uh, got some hats. I need a hat like that, that one. And yeah, well, this is, this is impressive. The uh, the Mayans definitely have much, 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 much love for the skulls. This is super cool. Mm. Let's, uh, here we have bejeweled beetles. Mm -hmm. Definitely, they're all alive. Wear them as a brooch, or I should call it like a roach. Get it? Ha ha ha. Alright everyone, here we are, we're on a tour bus. So this will take us around Merida, and we should be able to get some more history and see some of the sites. Um, Merida is actually a lot bigger than I would have expected, I guess. Like. It's super, super cool. I was not expecting all this. Like I knew it would be awesome, but like it's really awesome. So yeah, let's have some fun. Could you imagine like building that? However, like, even now I can't imagine building that, but imagine however many hundreds of years ago building that. Watch your head. Part of the tour bus experience. You got it done. Yeah.
es por Cuba. En los 60 por su gran demanda se decide por la aquí en Yucatán. Ya en los 70 por su... Podemos observar la Plaza de Toros de la Ciudad de México. Fue inaugurada el 3 de febrero de 1929. Los esclavos se trajeron desde España para hacer una réplica de la Plaza de la Contiene un teatro al aire libre formado por un escenario con concha acústica, lunetario y pérgolas. En las tres partes de este conjunto se reparten columnas con el nombre de un país americano, el escudo y el mapa del mismo. Only in Mexico. Oh, and watch your head. <laughs> Keep got a ducking. But yeah, super beautiful place, guys. So much history. Merida, Merida, Merida is really cool. And uh, just look at look at all these, but like new and old. Like this is very modern here. Yeah, shopping center of some sort. Here we have a beautiful statue. Just look at this courtyard. Just like trees. Again, so many beautiful buildings down here. I did not expect the architecture to be so exceptional. So really, really cool. Very, very cool. And then here's the special chairs, which apparently originated down here. And they're made for two people to sit and still leave room for Jesus. How cute. You and your loved one can sit beside each other and talk, but can't, can't, can't touch it all. Can't get too frisky. No, no caliente. Here in a bake shop, they have all kinds of different goods. There's a donut. So that's like, uh, probably like 40 cents American. These things look good. They got birthday cake, tiramisu, cheesecakes. That looks good, whatever it is. Lots of good looking things. Cakes. Meringues. Look at this. Got a whole a whole market. Mm -hmm. And here we have a whole market. This is crazy, guys. And I've been trying not to have my camera out too much just because, you know, whatever brings a lot of attention. Oh, opa, accent. But uh, yeah, look at this. Over there, you can see the El Pastor on the spit, with the fire. Yeah. All right, let's check this place out. This is cool. There's some, there's some fla uh, fancy looking waters. We got some buns. Yeah, this is, this is, this is real Mexico, everybody. This is intense. Lots of Jesus, Mother Virgin Mary statues. Here we got some uh, fruit stands, some frutas. Lots of peppers. Here we got some uh, tacarillas, clothes, and uh, another thing you notice too, as we got further away from the tourist area, everything got cheaper. Mm -hmm. Like when we first started into that area, the one guy went 250 for the watch. The other guy asked for 180. You know what I mean? So I just, I imagine, uh, you know, the more in this area. Here we're in a cooking area, selling meat by the kilo. All kinds of vegetables, cooking supplies. They, uh, like I said, bring out the camera brings a lot of attention. But it's pretty freaking cool. This is, this is, it's like nothing I've ever seen before. Shoes, tomates, vegetables, getting a coconut. Oh, I'm sorry. Thank you. So this is 75 cents. The equivalent is 75 cents. Mm 
not bad. Yeah. Coconut, muy bien. How is it? Here we have some al pastor. Make some tacos. We'll have to get some tacos here momentarily. And here we're in a butcher place. They have, uh, buy all your chickens, buy all your meat. I guess that's what you call fresh. But yeah, definitely, uh, definitely a little different than uh, our North American standards. Yeah, it's everyone, thank you so much for watching today's video. I really appreciate it. If you click my face right here, you can subscribe. Yes, that's right. Click my face, subscribe, guys. It helps me out, it helps you out. Then you don't miss an upload. And hopefully I can meet you when I come to your city. Also, click a video right here. I specifically pick two videos. Yes, that's right. Two videos specifically for you right here. So click a video right now. Get that going. And it's going to end. So click one quick. Let's go. Let's go. And have a great day.